Welcome back to Crypto Saras. I am George. We're all George. Good morning. Today, well, we got to talk about Bitcoin and how it's a historic time. And the bulls and bears make their stand. Of course, we're still, still in the aftermath of the FTX collapse. And both the bears and the bulls are making a stand and making their case on why Bitcoin is either good or Bitcoin is for delusional people. So let's talk about it and let's talk about what to expect for the remainder of this week. Welcome, 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 guys. The, the market bell just rung. Today, the U.S. market is looking pretty good. So is that going to help Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is up a little bit, closing in at 17,000 once again. And the U.S. market, like I said, was looking like it was going to be good today. But before I get to the U.S. market stuff, let's talk about the bulls and the bears. One of the biggest bears right on the front page right here. Charlie Munger, the right-hand man to Warren Buffett. Well, of course, his opinion of Bitcoin has not changed. Okay. Uh, he's been very open about how he feels, which is Bitcoin and the whole crypto ecosystem is a combination of fraud, delusion, and it's good for kidnappers. So obviously, Charlie Munger <laughs> did not change his mind after the FTX collapse. Okay. And you know what? Some would say, well, maybe, maybe he's right. Maybe crypto is just full of delusional people that think everything's going to go to the moon. And maybe it is just full of fraudsters like SBF and Do Kwan. Um, I don't know about the kidnappers part, but maybe he's right. But let me remind you guys, those that are starting to think that way. Yes, there has been a few times in Bitcoin's history where we go through these down periods. We go through these collapses. We do see bad actors get flushed out, okay? But that doesn't take away from Bitcoin because Bitcoin is Bitcoin is the truth, okay? It's the reason why Bitcoin was created because this kind of fraud and delusion and manipulation is not just for crypto. It's also on a grander scale being done by the governments and banks and institutions out there as well. This is why Bitcoin was created, actually to go against these things. Um, but there's times where it's scary and there's times where there are bad actors that do bad things, but they get flushed out ultimately and Bitcoin continues on. The fraudsters, right, they get weeded out. Bitcoin's fundamentals has never been better and we're in a historic time right now and I'm going to get to that a little bit. So unfortunately... You know, the FTX collapse has strengthened the conviction of some bears, but also strengthened the conviction of bulls as well. Michael Saylor is saying this FTX crash is good. It's good because, again, it flushes out the bad. It also strengthens the case for Bitcoin, okay? And he still believes that Bitcoin, of course, will continue forward, continue on, Although he does think that regulations will be coming, which in his opinion is good for Bitcoin anyways. He welcomes regulations so that, you know, Bitcoin could be separated and fully deemed as a commodity and everything else is security, right? And then we can move forward. That's what Michael Saylor is looking forward to. And the good thing is, you know, he's not being swayed off by the likes of Char Charlie Munger and others, or Peter Schiff for that matter. Peter Schiff is going all out crazy right now saying everything's going to go to zero for crypto. But, like I said, uh, you know, right now you got, you got bulls and bears both kind of like fighting it out, right, within the landscape. Uh, and the bulls continue forward. They're not, they're not going to change their mind. I'm not going to change my mind. I know what Bitcoin represents. I know where it's going to go, right? And like I said, we've been through some periods like this, but every single one makes us stronger. Same thing with Kathy Wood. Kathy Wood, her conviction, still there. 
She picks up another $2.8 million worth of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, although not Bitcoin, but it's still Bitcoin related and showing that, hey, she believes in DCA. She believes in picking up while people are fearful, while things are low, right? Um, Bitcoin's uh, or Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust the, that premium so many people are 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 tracking it's it's at a historic low right now it's like minus 40 something percent <laughs> it's quite low so you're actually getting like a 40 percent discount by buying bitcoin trust or bitcoin sh yeah a share of a trust um and that may be relevant when they convert to an etf which gary gunsler does not want to approve, but one day when they do approve it, or the SEC approves it, I should say, that may come into play. Um, so, anyways, Kathy Wood is still staying bullish on Bitcoin. And you could argue that, you know what, this is also very bullish because Bitcoin is flying off the exchanges at a historic rate right now. One of those historic moments in Bitcoin's history, almost $2 billion of Bitcoin is leaving per month and this is fantastic not only are people safeguarding their own crypto right now but also there's just less and less and less of it on the exchanges so when you have less volume or not less volume when you have less supply on exchanges and you have more people coming into this space while well, you do the math supply and demand causes the price to go up. So, and there's many metrics that also show you um, in relation to this. Well, here's the Bitcoin exchanges and net position and how it is just tanking right now, which is terrific. Also, supply for stable coins is also high. And that's also terrific because that shows how much money is sitting on the sidelines waiting to enter, right? Um, so, that's also. <laughs> That's also historically high, right? And also, this is the one that I chose to show on my uh, thumbnail. This is also just looking at previous periods uh, on the weekly scale when there's a ton of fear. You look at the volume. So the last time we saw this much fear was back in 2020 of March, okay? Uh, when we had that COVID sell-off that brought Bitcoin down to 3,800. Right now, um, actually, if you look at the volume, it's actually higher than even that point. But also, in reverse, the the bears could uh, look at this and say, well, the same thing happened back in May of 2020 when Bitcoin did fall down from 64000 all the way down to 28000 right? The volume also indicated that a big move was coming. But uh, two out of the three times right now is at, it comes after a big climb. Let's just put it that way, right? But obviously the biggest climb was in 2021. But again, this is one of those historic levels where we have not seen volume this high and good things could be coming afterwards. So just want to show you guys that real quick. Uh, here's another one, SOPR metric, which also takes into account like how much uh, someone spent on a Bitcoin versus how much it was last sold by. Um, and it's also very, very, very low, historically low. So a lot of these metrics, on-chain metrics, are showing this is a great time to be stocking up. Kind of like what Michael Saylor's planning, $500 million worth. He's planning on selling $500 million worth of sh uh, shares, a microstrategy to buy, and kind of like what Kathy Wood is doing and kind of like what a lot of other people are doing right now. Um, all right. So as for our favorite topic, FTX, uh, FTX now says before they claim that they probably have 100,000 creditors, now um, it could be over 1 million. So unfortunately, contagion, at least for the creditors, for the users, uh, is a lot bigger than people thought. Over 1 million creditors, right, in this new bankruptcy filing. So this has just begun. Don't know where this is going to go. Is anyone going to come in and buy their assets if there are any, right? Kind of like what they did with Voyager, and now that has been reset. 
right? Is anyone else going to come in and buy their assets? I have no idea, right? Has SBF been prosecuted yet? No, they're still under supervision. So we don't know what's happening. But of course, people are still trying to connect the dots on whether or not SBF was really behind it all, or he was just a puppet for, for, for uh, some other entities, right? Uh, was there some bigger agenda? People are trying to connect the dots. We don't know if those dots will ever be connected, but I did see this. That was interesting. Terrible did take a snapshot of this. The WEF was partnered up with FTX, and they have since then removed that page. But people noticed that the even the WEF uh, was partnered up with FTX for whatever reason. And of course, a lot of people, oops, I have my camera off. A lot of people have been making the connections of whether or not this was something for the Democratic Party. Even Elon said a question worth asking, right? So was this part of a bigger agenda? I don't know. I honestly don't know, but people are still connecting the dots and we'll see where it goes. Also, Zhu Su of Three Arrows Capital is now taking the time to kind of, I don't know, I don't know, I guess all the heat is off of him now. All the heat is on SBF and and um, and uh, FTX, right? So now he's tweeting all this stuff like, wait, Alameda's Dan Fredberg, uh, uh, he was a part of this ultimate poker scandal and people are noticing, you know, he liked to play with God mode before. Did he do it at FTX, right? Did Sam Bankman Free do it with FTX? Who knows? I mean, but Zhu Su is coming out like he, he's playing the, the innocent card, right? And he's making a lot of tweets about basically whatever happened with Three Arrows Capital uh, was all due to FTX. I didn't trust them and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, he's trying to take the heat off of him. But ultimately, we got to re remind ourselves that, yeah, even though FTX is a bad actor, Zhu Su was also a bad actor. He was just reckless with the $10 billion that he had in his fund. And you know what? Ultimately, he has to take responsibility. But he's he's tweeting out like, like, oh, yeah, it's like it has nothing to do with us. It's all SBF and FTX. And, you know, uh, we were fine. And, and, you know, we just classed because of them. Maybe FTX did pop the bubble, but the bubble was already there. So I don't think this is a good look for Zusu. And I think the authorities are after him right now, too. He, wherever he was from, I remember they were after him. So he's kind of like hiding out. He quickly sold his 50 million mansion uh, for pennies on a dollar to escape. And I don't know where he is. And he's tweeting out like, you know, oh, I'm innocent. Uh, that's not that's not the case. Uh, anyways, anyways, um, you know, as for some U.S. U.S. market news, uh, market's looking pretty good right now. I think this week could be good overall for equities because DXY started coming down because inflation numbers show that inflation was tapering off. So these are great things. Um, you know, so we'll see, we'll see what this week brings. Uh, but one thing is for certain Amazon is not looking good because they're cutting 10,000 jobs. I don't know if I covered this yesterday, but uh, that's not good at all. I don't remember the last time ever in history that I remember hearing about Amazon cutting jobs. Amazon has been in a growth mode for, I don't know how many years, 15 years, 20 years. Um, and this is the first time I'm seeing them struggle. So that, that tells you something that tells you either they have peaked or the current economic conditions is, is taking a toll. Right. And this is what Paul wants. Um, but, you know, we will see. We will see. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A.
could be the reason why. Could be the reason why Bezos left. Is he didn't want to deal with all the stuff that's coming. All right, um, scrolling up here. Michael, uh, appreciate the super chat. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I can't pronounce your last, uh, whatever your name is, but around the world. Have watched you every day while my wife was pregnant, and now my twins know your voice. Oh, man. Wow. That's, uh, I thank you for your support, and that's very humbling. Um, but appreciate it. Wow. Uh, let's see here. Building back better, yes. You know, like, like I said at the beginning, we have we have bad actors before. We had bad periods before, right? They get weeded out eventually, and Bitcoin moves forward. That's how it's always been and will be forever. Uh, let's see here. SB up was just a fall guy. I don't know. That New York Times piece um, was was just awful too, right? Like yesterday I covered that. Basically, he was asked how he's sleeping, and he didn't answer for anything else. <laughs> and he's like, ah, oh, it could be worse. But he has no remorse at all. Um, he was not sorry. Um, he didn't, he wasn't, you know, he didn't say anything positive. Yeah. Uh, Kevin McCann, welcome. And I appreciate that. Will Gary try to win us back with that XRP lawsuit? Well, Win us back how? You mean like lose the case? I don't think he wants to lose that case. This, this FTX thing put a lot of heat on Gary, that's for sure. Uh, I have no doubt that he may be investigated right now. I don't know who investigates people inside the SEC, maybe the Justice Department, but I, I'm assuming there's, there's some kind of investigation going on because the tie to SBF and FTX is, is too much to ignore. So I'm pretty sure that's that's looked at right now. But whether or not this is good for Ripple, well, I think Ripple has a good case. They have a really good case to win. Um, and if they do win, it'll be great, not only for XRP, but great for the entire industry. <clears throat> have you noticed that mainstream media isn't reporting directly from the Bahamas? I don't know. Are they supposed to? I, I don't know in this case if they like fly to Nasu, Bahamas, whether or not they're going to get better coverage. Unless they plan on like camping out his uh, uh, his uh, mansion and trying to get an interview from him. I don't, I don't know. What do you think about buying a ETH ETF like QET, uh, QETH? Um, I don't know. If you don't want to play with crypto and you only have a brokerage and you want to stay with stocks, then maybe. Otherwise, buying the real thing is always better than buying a synthetic. Um, and as for uh, QNT and HBAR long term, I'm neutral on both of those projects. Let's see here. Uh, that upgrade in two days. It's good. It's good. Let's go make them better. 
nothing really else to say about it. I did look at um, a lot of people were asking me about also like Cosmos, their Prop 83, whatever I was looking at it. Basically, this one was part of a like a bigger kind of like upgrade thing, but this was to bring a constitution, and I'm like, okay. It, basically, it was voted out, right? Like, I don't know. This was just like asking people whether or not they wanted a constitution. People said no, and that was, that's the end of that. <laughs> there was something else that they were voting on, the Adam 2.0, which, you know, the controversy behind that was to mint a whole bunch of Adam to put into Treasury and then decrease staking awards rather than have staking awards stay high and build it up towards the Treasury later. So this would kind of proactively do it, and people voted this down too. So that's the latest of the Adam. Regardless, um, this is not a negative towards Adam. This is just a new direction that the team was proposing and people didn't like it. So it's going to continue forward and they will still bring other awesome features like liquid staking, which I think would be a great thing for them overall. Uh, Karen, appreciate it. Many say that cash is king in a bear market and all shouldn't be touched in kill accumulation phase at least. If that holds true, what about DCA method? Cash is king if you use it, okay? <laughs> if you hold a, a, a boatload of cash, this is my opinion, if you hold a boatload of cash and then you watch things come back up and you never take advantage, then you, you lost the opportunity. The reason why it's king is because you can buy when things are low. But if you're afraid to buy when things are low, then you miss it all together and defeats the purpose. I don't think that um, having all cash is advantageous because you just don't know how fast things could come up. But I do think having a large portion, I've been saying like 25, 30, 35% in cash, that allows you to continue to DCA and continue to move forward. Um, that's how I see it. But if you're saying, well, can't be touching accumulation phase. How do you know when it's in accumulation phase? You're waiting for things to come back up. Well, if you do that, then you can miss out on a tremendous amount of upside, right? So it's best, in my opinion, to just take the guessing out. Just DCA over long term. Don't go too heavy when you DCA. Spread out your buys and make sure that your cash pile is there and you're using it appropriately. Um, the Bahamas is a crime scene. I, I don't know if you're trying to insinuate something else about Bahamas. I have no clue. Uh, the real winner that somehow continues to fly under radar is BNB. No time, no time better to buy it now. Buying this is just too big. Yes, that scares some people, but I, I've been saying, you know, people have asked me about tokens for other exchanges, and I'm like, yeah, um, no one is close to, to Binance, not even close. The, even FTX at its peak was nowhere close. Uh, BNB is absolutely huge, because not only is it being burned, you could get discount fees on Binance, but plus they have their own chain with a robust ecosystem of DeFi projects, and everything else so you know they have planned it really well it's very boring no one talks about it it doesn't pump very often um, but it just kind of just slowly hangs there right and it's within the top five <laughs> mp i appreciate that i appreciate it <laughs> Uh, yeah, diet, the carnivore diet is going good. I said that yesterday I'm entering week three, so it's good. I just wish I could eat a salad every so often. Afterwards, I think I, I will. I'm waiting for 30 days to pass to see how it is. But it, it was, it's been good. Uh, easier to adapt than I thought because I, I've been on, you know, keto before and uh, Atkins before. Um, 
Is today's slight pump due to wait? Is today's slight pump due to people front running on the news that a fallout regarding crypto assets to contain or news is regarding bad actors after? Uh, ah, it's a combination. You don't know. I mean, uh, obviously the contagion doesn't seem like it's so bad right now. That's positive, even though there's one million creditors. But like in terms of other projects, we haven't heard of anything else go belly up. Um, so that's good. U.S. market is doing good. Inflation data is showing it's going down. DXY is going down. These are all good things. But, you know, honestly, right now, um, we have a lot, lot more to go, way more room to go, right? Also, I mentioned all the historic stuff. Um, a lot of the on-chain metrics show we're at a historic low right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reason to NMCT. Heard that Zillica CEO has left to join another project. Thoughts on Zillica? Oof, I didn't hear about that. Zillica is kind of like a 2017 project that never really made a lot of traction. In 2021, they gained a little bit because they were coming out with their metaverse. Um, I forgot, Metaopolis or something like that. And everyone jumped in on that, and they kind of regained a little bit of um, popularity. But they, they, they've always... Cut, Kind of like they're a layer, they're a layer one, um, and uh, they had sharding. They were the very first project that, that had sharding available. It was fast, but it's not as fast. It's kind of like Gen. I would say like if you think about Gen two, they're like Gen two and a half, while everything else now is like Gen three or four. So they're a little bit behind the curb. Chris, congratulations. Chris has become a whole coiner. Congratulations. Good job. It's hard. It's hard to be a whole coiner even now. All-time high asks, would you sell alt at a loss and try to get more coins cheaper? Well, that's the million-dollar question. A lot of people try to do that, try to outsmart the market. And uh, in most cases, in most cases, I'd say the people that have tried to do that have lost more money than not because... When you do that, and me personally, I have tried to do that many times. And every time I do that, I put more stress on myself. I second guess myself more. And whenever there's any kind of movement, it makes me feel like I missed out. I have to get in, and then it makes me do irrational things. So from my personal experience, of course, there's sometimes I guess right. But more often than not, I have guessed wrong when I try to outsmart the market. And many other people have told me that as well. So you decide. You decide. Um, but if you have no cash on hand and you're trying to get that cash pile, then maybe. Golden Sun, man, I appreciate the super chats, but you're you're trying to start a conspiracy about the Bahamas that that um, I'm probably not gonna look into. What the movie's going to be awesome. People are already talking about this uh, FTX saga um, being turned into a movie and which actors are going to play who. Yeah, it probably, probably is going to happen. I'm surprised they haven't, uh, they haven't created one on Luna yet. Stats Anonymous said, last time I saw all my BDC, I then watched BDC go to all-time high. 
It always happens. It, it seems like the market just counter trades you, right? Maybe it was. Maybe FTX and SBF was was doing that. You know, now it's coming out that hey, their their legal guy like to play God mode. You know, FTX always had the highest leverage of all the exchanges, despite their volume not being the highest. Um, you know, it tells you something. Something suspicious was going on. They were desperate to try to plug that eight billion hole. So they could have been counter trading the entire market. So that's why we had such a hard time recovering. Every time Bitcoin was doing well, guess what? They would just short the hell out of the market to liquidate people. That could have been very well been going on. And that's why Bitcoin has had no traction to get above 20,000 because maybe they were they were suppressing the market on purpose. You know, I'm sure more of that's going to come out later. But right now, I can only speculate. Uh, you put the math, you do the math, and put two and two together. That's what it seems like. So, Sats and Honest, it's very hard being a holder right now. Now that everyone is bashing news, Kramer, Munger, my family, friends, maybe indicates bottom is near. Yes, when whenever there's high. Fear, very, very high fear, okay? That usually indicates a bottom. Usually I find when you can take it no more, like you're at your breaking point, you're like, I got to sell it all. You wait one more day and it gets better. It's usually at that breaking point. And I don't know why, but usually when they're at that breaking point, that's when things turn around. It, It's like clockwork every time, right? And why are you listening to Kramer? He's the biggest flip-flopper of them all, uh, especially when it comes to crypto. Um, Munger, you know his position on crypto. It will never change. right? Your friends and family, well, it doesn't matter how much they, they, they bash you. They're not going to be the ones that's going to be driving Lambos around. right? You will be. <laughs> so um, sometimes you just can't. You try to help, you try to educate, but there are some people that, that just can't be helped either due to your ego or ignorance or they just simply don't care. But you just worry about yourself. Worry about yourself. Don't worry about others. Shouldn't an inquiry be made into the campaign contribution SBF made? I'm sure that's being looked at. I, I'm pretty sure all this is being looked at, you know. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of people, and I'm talking about not just common internet detectives, a lot of influential people that got burned by this, and they are looking into it. That's why, you know, I think Gary's already being investigated. I think his connection to this is too deep, and we can hear in the, you know, the next month or so that Gary Gunzer resigns from his position. I'm pretty sure he's feeling the heat right now, too. And uh, everything is being looked at right now. I have no doubt. No doubt at all. All right, guys. Overall, to conclude, you know, FTX saga continues, but less drama today. But you have the bulls and bears battling it out. You know, both have their convictions. I'm sticking with the bulls. My conviction has not swayed. And I do believe we're in a historic time right now to be buying and holding. So stay strong, my friends. I'll see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, all right? Have a good one, guys, and smash the like and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye-bye.